G'day everyone, Lauren Cress, the business scientist here for another episode of What Science Says. And today we're talking about the placebo effect and the nocebo effect. I'm going to share three experiments as examples of the placebo effect and the nocebo effect as well. I'm saving the best one until the end. Absolutely bizarre study that was done on the nocebo effect. So let's start off with the placebo effect. What is the placebo effect? Essentially what the placebo effect is, is when patients experience improvement in their symptoms, despite the fact that they are not given a pharmacologically effective drug. They're essentially given some sort of like fake treatment, like it might be a sugar pill, it might be like a saline solution injection, it might be a sham surgery. And what happens is that the participant of the experiment reports feeling better. Now, this has been actually studied quite a lot in neuroscience now because we're trying to work out, well, why does this happen? Because there is an effect. And what neuroscientists are finding is that it actually changes at the brain level, at the biochemical level, at the hormonal level that are having an effect on the outcomes reported by patients. Really, really interesting stuff. But there needs to be a few things that are kind of set up uh, to sort of induce the placebo effect. So things like we talk about context, for instance, like going into a therapeutical environment where you're speaking with a doctor or a healthcare professional, and they're telling you about what's going to happen as the result of taking this drug or putting this cream on a rash, etc. The context and the cues are really, really important for sort of setting up patient expectations and patient self-reporting as well. But what's really interesting is it doesn't just stop at the subjective level. So it doesn't just stop at patients going, I think I feel better or I think I feel less pain and reporting that they've had improvements from something that is essentially nothing. What's also happening is it's actually biochemical changes happening in the body. So they can be measured, they can be tracked. Now, I want to talk about experiments because I think this really helps to solidify what the placebo effect is all about. So the first experiment I'm going to talk about is an experiment that was conducted on people who experience migraines. So essentially what they did in this study is they wanted to look at how patients with chronic migraines felt after taking a popular migraine drug treatment or taking a placebo. And what they found was even when they had marked this pill box as placebo and the participants knew it was a placebo, the researchers still found that there was a 50% improvement from taking the sugar pill that was known to be a sugar pill. Now, what's really interesting about that and what the researchers said was that potentially even just taking the pill itself had an effect on feeling better. And that could be something to do with what we call associative learning. So associative learning is kind of like the classic Pavlov's dog experiment, where basically, uh, if you if you don't know, I'll just quickly explain it. But Pavlov has this dog, he rings this bell to let the dog know that the dog is going to get some food. So ring the bell, dog gets food, ring the bell, dog get f- gets food. The associative learning that the dog experiences is that when the bell is rung, the dog will get food. And so then the biochemical changes that the dog is about to get food are observed, like the dog salivates more because it's getting ready to eat something. Then Pavlov takes the food away and just starts ringing the bell. And the dog is still salivating because the dog's learned that when the bell happens, it's about to eat food. And that could be something that's happening here with the placebo effect is that we've learned throughout our lives, taking a pill means I'm going to feel better. And even if I know this is a sugar pill, I'm still going to feel better. It brings up some really interesting ethical questions as well. So we're going to talk about that a bit later, but let's talk about experiment two. So experiment two involves this milkshake. It's called Mind Over Milkshakes. Mindsets, not just nutrients, determine ghrelin response. Now, ghrelin is a hormone that's released to let us know whether or not we're satiated or full. So what happens is when we have an appetite, we have high ghrelin. And as we consume food, our ghrelin drops. It declines to say, okay, I'm full. I'm satiated. I don't need any more food. 
What they did is they got a 320 calorie milkshake. They told half of the participants that this milkshake was an indulgent milkshake. In fact, it had 620 calories. And in another experiment group, they said this was a sensible milkshake and it only had 160 calories. Now, remember, either way, both, all of the milkshakes have 320 calories in them. So they're getting exactly the same amount of food. What happened was in the indulgent group, we saw this steep decline in ghrelin. When the group who thought they were drinking a sensible low calorie milkshake drank the milkshake, they didn't have this decline in ghrelin. In fact, they had a relatively flat ghrelin response. There wasn't really any change in the level of ghrelin in their system. So basically their body was telling them, you're still hungry. And that is super, super interesting to me because what that's telling us, like I said at the beginning, is this isn't just a self-reporting, I think I'm full. This isn't just a tick the box, this is a self-report of what I think. This is the body is actually saying you feel full or you don't feel full from consuming the same level of calories. Now, in this experiment, they controlled for things like health. They controlled for things like that person's normal appetite and eating. So there wasn't like, you know, in one group you had people who were really used to eating big amounts of food and another group, small amounts of food. It was all controlled. The only thing that changed was whether or not they told them it was indulgent or sensible. Super, super interesting. Now, the third experiment, and this one's particularly interesting when we start talking about the different ways that you can give someone a placebo. It goes back to that sort of clinical context. So in this experiment, what they did is they took participants who had what's called degenerative medial meniscus tear. They didn't have any knee arthritis or anything like that, but they had this degenerative tear. And generally, the recommendation would be to have knee surgery. What they did is they put half of the participants randomly assigned into either getting the knee surgery that would be typically done for treating this meniscus tear. And the other group, they just gave sham surgery, which is essentially they still put the patient through all the operative procedures, but they don't actually do anything to the knee to treat it. Now, the, there were two follow-ups from this. They looked at the participants and how they reported feeling in terms of their knee one year later and two years later. In the first year, what they found was there was no significant difference between the patients feeling better. That means that on average, the amount of patients who reported feeling better in the actual group that received treatment versus the placebo group that received sham treatment were the same. Actually, the number was slightly higher in the sham treatment group, slightly higher in terms of feeling better, but it wasn't what we call significantly different. So it means by chance it could just be, you know, a couple of points higher than than the other group. So in, in terms of science, they were like, look, essentially all of these participants said that they felt better and significantly better after receiving the operation, whether it was actually a treatment or whether it was sham. They followed up with the participants two years later and they found the same thing. So the placebo was just as effective as what we think that knee surgery is for treating the knee pain. And that brings a whole heap of things into question as well, right? Like why would you put someone through an operation that's super expensive that supposedly has this effect and this you know, patient outcome when you could essentially just give them the operation, but not do anything to the knee. So you don't need that like high technical surgical ability because you're just doing sham surgery. You're not actually going in and changing anything. You're just pretending that you've gone in and changed something. And what we found through tons of experiments done in the into the placebo effect is that the more invasive the treatment, or the non-treatment, the pretend treatment, the better the outcome. So patients who take a sugar pill versus patients who have acupuncture versus patients who have surgery, the more invasive, the more you will see the placebo effect come into play. Uh, absolutely fascinating. And I'll put all the links to those experiments in the description below. To catch part two of this episode on the nocebo effect, click on what's up next. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the latest content on my channel.